Happy holidays, guys. We hope you've been enjoying your break. We have too, but we've been working really hard on our lightsaber test video. And in this video, you're actually gonna see some behind the scenes stuff from that upcoming test. Plus, make sure you stick around to the end of the video because we're announcing the Batarang giveaway winners for the fan mail. And first, some lightsaber footage. So this week, we're getting ready for our big lightsaber test video, and that involves building a blast shield door. And here's the frame of it, which looks really cool. And we're actually gonna use the lightsaber to cut through the door and chase some stormtroopers. Now the stormtroopers are gonna need a weapon. So we actually picked up a few paintball guns, glow sticks. Cause you know what happens when you shoot a glow stick? It looks like a blaster shot from Star Wars. dangerous. All right, now we put the glow sticks in the microwave for, I don't know, 10 seconds. Boop. Ooh, they're warm. Where do we want to shoot from? That look pretty cool. This required no modification. I honestly thought it would be harder to shoot glow sticks. But as you can see, you can literally load them in the gun and bam, you've got a Star Wars blaster. Now what would be really cool is if we could make a hopper to be able to rapid fire these. I don't know if we're gonna have time for that for, for our big lightsaber test video, but you never know. Now, as you guys know, we have a lot of industrial equipment in the garage and it's awesome. But unfortunately, some industrial equipment is still a bit out of reach because it's super expensive. But what if you could hack together your own version of something that costs thousands of dollars? Going into a bit more of a technical explanation of a problem we've actually been having here at the shop. As you know, we've been expanding over the past two years and we have a whole bunch of computers now and other internet connected devices. And just recently, we actually discovered that there's a limit on how many internet connected devices you can have on a consumer router. And that limit for us is 34, I believe. Um, so the options for us are either buy a commercial router, which is gonna be pretty expensive, or build our very own PF Sense box, which is going to act like a commercial router and allow us to plug in more than 34 devices. I believe over 100? I don't think we'll go over 100, I hope. Uh, pretty much any computer in the past 10 years will be powerful enough for this application. You could even use an old Dell like this, but we're not going to use this one. It's only a single core. So we've got this old motherboard here. The dual core processor is already installed. We just need to add a few more components and then we'll be able to set this up. You could actually get away with only having about a gig of RAM, but I'd recommend using at least four. Now technically, you can build a PF Sense box with just two Ethernet ports, but if you want some more flexibility, you'll actually want three. Now the NICs I'm installing are gigabit NICs and you can grab those for 10 to 15 bucks. Now the software is quite small, so you could run it off a USB drive, but if you're planning on doing it for long-term deployment, I'd recommend actually using a real hard drive. Now make sure you plug the hard drive into port zero or one, the first hard drive port in the motherboard. This is because the PFSense software installs the OS on the first drive it sees. All right, we're almost done. All we need is a power supply. And the beauty is a system like this doesn't need much power, so you can use a pretty small one. Do, do we even have an extra power supply? Make sure to screw that on there. And this, there. You, got, you had two sensors. What, what, do you, what do you need two for? So basically, each of those is a load cell, right? Uh, here, let me show you on the whiteboard. This is gonna take forever. Normally, uh, you might see a lot of the load cells that uh, look like this. So they'd have two holes here and two holes here. And you would actually put your load on it like so. Uh, and in that case, you would have a load cell here and a load cell here. So when you're pushing down, this one will be loaded. When you're pushing up, this won't be loaded, right? Uh, and then you'd have your positive wire, your negative wire, and then you're up and you're down, right? Four wires. Problem in our load cells 
is that it's actually only a single load cell. So imagine that without this. And the sensor needs to read both. Now we could just build a voltage divider, but the resistors that we currently have are the best tolerance, which means I don't get the, the cleanest readings. So instead I'm just using both of them and not putting any load on one of them. For now, and then we're gonna upgrade it. That, that can only do 50 kilograms right now, so we'll probably put a 200 kilogram load cell on there in the future. Well, that's the sketchiest power supply ever. Yeah. And probably plug the main thing in. See how they're not plugged in there? Oh, there's a power button right here, isn't there? One of these pins is the power switch. Oh, power switch. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we did it! Alright, so once you're in the BIOS, you just have to change the boot options. So you take the boot device priority, and you're just going to change the first one to removable device, and this way we can actually install the software from the USB drive. Alright, now on another computer, you're going to go to the PFSense website and download the PFSense software. After you get that, you're going to want to get another piece of software called Rufus. Rufus? 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 Which allows you to make a bootable USB drive. Now that we have PFSense on the USB drive, we can plug it into the motherboard and start installing. And now we wait. So literally the only thing this installer asks you is which hard drive you want to use. So you select that, hit OK, and we're good to go. So we should probably make a case for this thing. Do you know what time it is? It's laser time. A perfect fit. All right, so we've already designed a nice little case and we just have to laser cut it and then assemble it. We got the mother motherboard backplane installed and the box is pretty much good to go. So the only thing left is let's paint it. And if you guys want to build your own computer case like this, we've actually put links in the description below to the DXF files so you can get this laser cut yourself. All right, we're almost done. Now, while I was painting it, I noticed we might have forgotten something. There doesn't seem to be a power switch anywhere. Who designed this thing? So we spent Ian's money today. Our money? <laughs> oh, we didn't tell you? No. We bought a Vive for the company. <laughs> so anyways, we're hoping to do some VR projects. So instead of just showing you 3D models on the screen in SolidWorks, we'll actually be able to basically project them into real space using the VR system, uh, which would truly be a more like Iron Man-esque process, I guess, where it's just like, ah, oh, magic. And the mic has batteries now. <laughs> Anyways, um, let's take a look at the Vive. So we've got two base stations, and basically what these do is blast a infrared kind of grid on you, and then both the sensors and the Vive uh, headset have receivers so it can tell where you are in uh, real time in uh, real space, basically. And what we're hoping to do with these guys is actually mount them kind of off of the mezzanines, like one over here and one over there. And then we're actually going to draw or paint a square on the floor, which will kind of be the VR area for when we're doing testing and whatnot. And we might even be able to use that for live streams. So we kind of like build the model as we go, literally out here in the workshop while someone's on the computer doing the actual work. So I've used these quite a few times now um, at Control V. At Control V, and uh, my brother has one too, so I'm pretty familiar with the platform now, and I'm actually kind of excited to play a few games on this because VR is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. 
Now, speaking of adding virtual reality to our videos, Samsung actually sent us a Gear 360, which means, you got it, 360 video. Oh, look, it's you. Yeah. It's me. And it's actually pretty good with the stitching, like going around pretty quick, you, you don't even know where it cuts. If you look really carefully, you can kind of see a discrepancy, so there's a little something right there. But honestly, it's not a major deal and it doesn't really take away from the, the video. We're hoping to do a 360 tour of the garage at some point, and we're gonna be taking this on our trip to uh, England when we become a Kingsman for a day. So hopefully we'll be able to get some sweet 360 shots of the Kingsman Tailor Shop, the black cab with all the gadgets, and whatever else we get to see. So that should be pretty cool. We're gonna need a lot of batteries. You really gotta start wearing some Team Spirit shirts, Bob Cogden. Yeah. No one cares about Umber. I mean, it's uncomfortable. Would you like one of my women, women's shirts? It's really cold in Canada. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, it's getting warm. Yeah, it's getting a bit hot. But now that we're outside, my hand feels great. I got <laughs> oh. <laughs> Setting the brain a little bit. There we go. That's better. High five! <laughs> Yeah, we should be good. Fire can't go through leather. What about fire boxers? <laughs> the pack is gone. <laughs> yeah, there's fire on the inside. <laughs> really? <laughs> Keep your hands extra warm. <laughs> I'm just gonna keep looking at it. No. Oh. Uh, uh, yeah. We got mail. That didn't work. All right. In the past month, we've gotten more fan mail than we've ever gotten before. Should we mention something about how, as soon as we bribed people with batarang? And I don't want to um, point fingers, but I think it's because we offered you guys batarangs if you sent us cool fan art. So let's take a look at the mail we got. This is from California. Dear Hacksmith, my name is Nick and I'm 12 years old. All my life I've loved electrical engineering. I'm having a hard time figuring out how to learn about it and I was wondering if you had some advice. A return address would be useful. So to everyone wondering questions about how do I get started in engineering? We actually have an awesome FAQ on our website. There's a link in the description below, which has a lot of info about how we got started and how you can get started too. So go ahead and check that out and hopefully your question is answered. This one is from England. Ooh, is this a Christmas card? To the Hacksmith, the greatest YouTube channel. Could you please put this in a video? Hope you like the art. And if you do send me a batarang, the address is below. Ooh, this is some quality paper. <laughs> Here are some drawings of your projects. That's pretty awesome. What's that? You're not allowed to do that, Ian. What is this? A FedEx invoice? This isn't fan mail. All right, next up, how about this big one? Ooh, robotic laser surgery. He's also included the blueprints. Uses, laser surgery. Colon cancel removal. Unwanted, un, what is that word? Unwanted kid removal? <laughs> okay. And uh, yeah, there's the, there's the fan art, which is awesome. I love your channel so much. Your work has inspired me to do some thinking myself. I've built a robotic panda and an Iron Man helmet. 
Those two things don't go together. P.S. You should build a super high jump system, like in Battle Battle Battlefront BO3. Is that some game? Next letter. Thor's 300 volt capacitor hammer. To whoever holds this hammer, may he be worthy, shall possess the power of Thor. <laughs> awesome. Dear the Hacksmith, my name is Liam. I'm from Ontario, Canada, a neighbor, and I'm a big fan of you. I've been a fan of your work ever since the Batman Grappling Hook, and I love your Make It Real series. My favorite creation is the Flying Like Iron Man series. I hope you'll be able to continue it. I also include some fan art of the Thor's 300 volt hammer. Let's try one of these. <laughs> a silver play button. Also in this box is a custom Hacksmith play button that I made. I have footage of me making it, and with your permission, I would like to post on my channel. Go for it. I've been a big fan of your channel for a long time, ever since you were first on the Daily Planet. Thanks, Kanan. Recycling paper, I like it. This is some letter that a high school sent home to, <laughs> to the student. But anyways, damn. That's some nice fan art. Oh, and we got Deadpool. Canadian Deadpool. Batman was drawn for this, but I thought I would throw in Deadpool from a few years ago. That's awesome. Thanks. I don't know what your name is because you didn't sign it. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. It amazes me what a madman could do in a shop. <laughs> wow. I wish I could join you, but I'm a teen living in the States. Sincerely, Caleb. That's pretty cool. Tack attack. Sticky glue removal. And it's biodegradable. Guess that goes out to BCM Chem Products. Thanks for sending us some samples. It's a whole bunch of it. I wonder if it tastes good. There you go. Oh wait. Maybe there's a letter. I think there is. There is. Thank you for your purchase of Tack Attack. Am I gonna get a bill for this? This is original artwork that I drew just for you. It's the Calvin and... I feel like it's Calvin and Hobbes? Inspired? When will they invi invent a, a remote that clicks for you? <laughs> uh, what a world we live in. My name's Alex and I'm from Little Rock, Arkansas. Huge fan of your channel, very inspired by your projects. I'm in the 12th grade and started to do my own Make It Real projects. I've made various different Batarangs. I have one that I designed myself on the back. Also, I wanted to add, please do a call out of my name in your next fan mail video. And please, please, please send me a Batarang. We'll see. It's got a fancy stamp on the back. <laughs> awesome. Name's Joshua, 15 years old. I've been a huge fan ever since I found out about you four years ago. Wow. Also, when will the Iron Man project resume? before this video comes out. All right, we're getting to the end. Dear the Hacksmith, big fan. Saw that you have a contest. I think it's really cool. So I drew a cool picture of you. Hopefully, I'm gonna win. If I win, send the battle ring to my address. Huh. Awesome, nice work. All right, let's see what's in uh, this big box. It appears to be a Spider-Man web shooter. Perhaps? So I think. Oh, here we go. Oh, and there's a letter in here. There we go. <laughs> Dear Hacksmith, my name is Shrewtant. If you cannot pronounce it, just call me Shrew. And I have been a fan of your videos and the things you make since you started your channel. I first found out of you because of Colin Furs and loved your videos. I myself have made an arm mounted cannon for you here and here are the instructions. Put your hand in the elastic band, put on the magnetic button and then pull back the string and shoot. Which is basically what I did. That's really cool. Thank you. All right, we got one from uh, Pegasus School in California. Dear Hacksmith, I love your videos and creations, especially your electromagnet Captain America shield. Would you please send me one of your batarangs? Please, I'm thank you for all your videos. Please feature this in a fan mail video. X Beast. Dear Hacksmith, I have been watching your show for a few years now and I feel in love with the tinkering and building homemade projects. 
and I fell, have fell in love with tinkering and building homemade projects. My favorite projects were the Batman grappling hook and the Kingsman umbrella. Keep hacking and having fun. Sincerely, Connor. There's a little picture of an umbrella. <laughs> this one's in a plastic bag. Apology from Canada Post. <gasps> Dear customer, we sincerely regret your mail item has been damaged. It was found in this condition in the mail stream. We realize your mail is important to you and we are always concerned when mail entrusted to our care is damaged. We continue to improve our processing methods to help reduce occurrences of mail damage. You may call Canada Post if you have any blah, blah, blah insurance stuff. Yeah, it's still a one piece. Ooh, I think this one has a... <laughs> this one already has a battering. Put this on a good wall that you will think will look good. Please read on a video and send me a signed battering. All right, he wants me to keep this one, so I'll post this somewhere in the garage. All right, there's a, a puffy one. Abstract, I like it, I like it. Dear Hacksmith, I'm writing from the UK to say I love your channel and I have an ambition to be an inventor just like you. I have a 3D printed two bug clips for you to keep things together. <laughs> That's actually awesome. Good. Bite a battering. All right, last two. Another battering. <laughs> Your subscriber, Ryan Madden. That's some awesome fan work. Thanks, Ryan. I love you guys, but stop sending batarangs. We have too many. All right, last one. Dear Axsmith, I've seen most of your videos and you're a huge inspiration to young viewers like me. I was saving my money for a 3D printer or a laser cutter, but the prices are a little too high for me right now. Don't worry, just save up. They are good investments. Also, I have a question. How much money have you put into your garage? Because there is some pretty cool stuff in there. I was gonna go to Canada this summer, but I live all the way in Maine, so it's a little far, but I might go to Winterfest this winter. From Bryce. So it's hard to say, but a lot. And it's important to note, a lot of our equipment here has been sponsored by companies. We found a whole bunch of free tools and we always go for tool sales and buy stuff used. And it might seem like I have a lot of stuff now, which I guess I do, but this is the result of 10 years of collecting tools. So you just have to start. And I'm 27 now, so I'm guessing you're younger than me 10 years ago, which means you've got a head start. And finally, we have the biggest package we've ever received at the shop. It was really dicey getting it down the driveway, but... The Slant Pro CNC Lathe by Tormach. So this is quite the upgrade from our old lathe, which was over 100 years old and not working the greatest. But wait, why is this one slanted? I mean, I guess it's called the, the Slant Pro 15L. All right, time to announce the other two winners of the Batarangs. My other f two favorite pieces of fan art is one, our silver play button with the Hacksmith logo instead of the YouTube logo, and this awesome portrait of me as Captain America, or should I say Captain Hacksmith. Anyways, if you guys want a chance at winning a Batarang, send us fan mail. There's a link in the description below to our P.O. box. Um, but do remember, include your return address because we need somewhere to send these things. Big thank you to everyone who sent us fan mail and to everyone who's planning on sending us fan mail. Our favorite from this video was the Batman. Now, unfortunately, he didn't actually sign his artwork and I think I threw the envelope out. So we might have to do some CSI work to figure out where to send that Batarang. Now, while I wish I could keep working on that video, unfortunately, everyone went home. But since work is home for me, I'm, I'm kind of all alone here. You guys hear crickets? <laughs>